Okay. So, uh, as you might have heard before, I uh, work for Jellyfish. Anybody knows Jellyfish? <laughs> oh, more people. Yeah. Uh, so, we're producing all sorts of, uh, uh, well, production, cinematographic things, whatever, anything. Uh, at the present, we are doing TV series. We are doing, uh, we are actually starting to recruit now for a feature film, character uh, animated feature film. We are uh, having several uh, visual effect productions, uh, both in uh, feature film and in uh, uh, TV series. So we embrace the whole range. So this is more or less what, what we do over there. Uh, myself, um, I have been, I am, I'm the um, head of animation of the studio. Uh, I take care of every project where there is uh, consistent animation involved. Um, I have been in the industry for a lot of years, <laughs> for, <laughs> for 32 years. I'm ancient. Uh, I started when there, there was not um, even, um, well, there were not the computers, almost, and there was not internet, so I was doing 2D animation for DreamWorks. I've been working for a lot of different uh, productions. I've been mainly working for uh, uh, feature films, for movies. Um, I've done, well, from, I work for Sony, for DreamWorks, for all the studios here from uh, uh, Framestore to MPC and DNAG. I worked on uh, many movies, like, uh, very realistic from, like, um, Superman, Man of Steel, uh, or um, John Carter, or uh, Snow White, to very cartoony, like, uh, uh, cloudy with a chance of meatballs, uh, um, or um, very, very cartoony 2D. Actually, no, it was quite realistic uh, scene, but uh, uh, main production. So I, I, I embraced the whole range from 2D to 3D. So that's who is talking to you. Um, Melissa, Melissa is not here. So I'm a little bit sorry. I would like to talk with the person present. So let's pretend that. Uh, you are Melissa, <laughs> okay? You are old Melissa. This is your real, okay? Uh, let's have a look all together. So we see the overall thing first. I love you. What? You don't understand. I've never said that to anyone before. Um, I once said it to a cat. Off we go. All right, so uh, let's have a, a chat on the overall. I've not been very good like before, so I didn't prepare the clips, so you have to be patient. I will go back and forward. Um, the overall, the overall thing. Uh, I don't know if you did prepare, you're preparing, or you are thinking to start to prepare a reel for yourself uh, in the specific as animator. Uh, if you do, we all know how to, how to structure it. Do, do you have an idea or how to structure a reel? Let's say you have Sorry? Best animation first, uh, best animation last, best animation last. Fantastic. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Promoted. Uh, yes, that's exactly how it should be. Um, why? There is a reason why. Um, that's the first thing you should know. The second thing you should know, don't put uh, 10 shots if you have done 10 shots because you have to put 10 shots. Put the best shots that you have inside, okay? 
Doesn't matter if you're just three shots. If they are the best, put this. I want to see the best of you. You have to sell yourself with your best. Doesn't matter if it's longer means, uh, sorry, uh, longer doesn't mean uh, necessarily better, actually. Sometimes it's not because you see uh, shots that you, sh you would have not liked to see. So that's the second thing to keep in mind. And uh, uh, of course, if you have a lot of stuff that is good, still try not to be long in your rail. Don't go over two minutes if you can because it will never be seen unless your animation is, is that good that people is just, wow, they want to see you, you're a genius, okay? So those are three things that uh, I would really uh, warmly suggest to remember when you prepare your reel. Um, the reason why is, uh, I give you a very, very uh, simple example. I've been recruiting for a, a production of 21 minutes, uh, like feature film quality, uh, animation and I needed to get 23 animators. In two months I had to vision more than 350 reels. Meanwhile I was also preparing the, the, the show. So you can imagine how much time I have as a recruiter, as an animation director, to choose. None. I don't have any time. <laughs> so if you do a very long uh, reel and which at the beginning there is something that is not interesting, you're off already, it's done. Okay, that's the reason why you have to, to put your best at the beginning because I will just be taken by this. <coughs> and when I, I see something interesting, I go on watching your reel. And if you finish with a good shot, I will remember you. That's the reason why the first and the, and the second at the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very simple, it's very practical reason. Why. Off we go. So this is uh, in general terms. I think in the case of Melissa, uh, one thing that she has done at the beginning, she left the titles a little bit long. She could uh, cut them off. We saw her e email and her thing, so, and also without music and other things, they try to uh, be entertaining. We are a storyteller at the end. If you can say something about what we said before, I uh, uh, evaluated much about the camera that we, you have been uh, taught uh, previous because it's very important. And, uh, but one thing you have to always to remember, camera is, has always, always to be subordinated by the character, by the story. The story is the character. And the camera is always, think about whose point of view is this camera. So you don't have to just, just because it's cool to make 20 billion movements, it's, it's not needed. The character drives always. You might have a situation in which you don't need uh, to do, or actually you need to do the opposite, but there, might, uh, there is a reason, a precise reason behind that. So this is, I just wanted to add uh, the previous uh, questions. I don't remember who was. <coughs> uh, okay, let's go into the detail of this animation. If I, if I can play. Ah. I love you. What? You don't understand. I've never said that to anyone before. Um, I won't send it to a cat. So those actually are four shots, a little piece. It's, it's a little bit, they're, they're very short, but they're very connected to one another, so it's very difficult to divide it. Uh, and this is the difference with actually your reel, in which you could divide, because every single piece could stay by itself and have a sense. This is a little bit more difficult. You can do it, but yeah. The choice was not bad to keep it together. If I can play it again. Oh. I love you. What? You don't understand. Okay, what, what I can see overall in this animation is um, there are the moments and uh, the acting is chosen quite okay. But I see that uh, how the animation has been crafted we, um, is quite even. The old movement very often is quite even. So the, the character are turning, all the body, for instance, here, and, uh, and, and the girl. Now we cannot go scroll step by step here. What? You don't understand. You see the turning of the girl, for instance? She's turning every, 
she, from here, she's turning all together, very even. Okay. When you do such a, uh, a movement, which has to be very controlled, you have to make it interesting. So first of all, always think about twisting the body, which become visually more interesting. If you have always a, this, is, is, a, is, a, is a Pinocchio, and it's, it's not interesting. You have to make um, a beautiful character also from a visual point of view. So when you're like this, you can first of all, which we miss here, have a little bit of weight extra. So you put the weight. When you're animating, one of the first things you have to learn is where to put the weight. And here we have a little bit of the lack of that. So we can put the weight and then turn. And when you turn, you have different parts turning in different ways. And then I put the weight on the other leg. So it's a little bit more complex, the movement, that we see here. Oh, I find a way. Ooh. I've never said that to anyone. What? You don't understand. Okay? What? You don't understand. Can you see that? Uh, what? You don't understand. Whoop. What? You don't understand. Okay. Same thing with him at the beginning. I love you. What? You don't understand. I love you. What? Again, we have all the parts moving all together. Try, and, try to avoid all this evenness. Okay? Uh, in this case, uh, it looks like we had poses and we um, on, uh, on stepped and we splined them uh, without having many breakdown in the middle. So you have to work out much uh, more in detail the breakdown before starting to spline if you work uh, in stepped. If you work already splined, it doesn't matter, you have to, to, to give, to give uh, more breakdown. Uh, in in order to make movement become more interesting and more uh, believable, more realistic. Oh wow, I didn't realize that the color of that is very, very green. I love you. What? You don't understand. I've never said that to anyone before. Um, so I can say I overall say there is uh, a little bit this lack of, there is always the same, um, type of speed. Type. So we have to speed it up, to have to space it uh, slightly different offset parts of the body. For instance, if I, if I put my hand on the shoulder of, of, the, of, of the boy, first I go with this and, and then I ride with the body. I don't do the whole thing all together. Always try to do this. If you observe, once uh, in the moment in which you do this type of animation, very, very uh, accurate acting, uh, always, always take references, always film yourself. It's very, very important to do that. Uh, nowadays especially, because if you want to be successful, if you want to become an animator and work in the industry, you will always have uh, a very, very big uh, uh, number of, uh, of people that is very much trained uh, into shooting themselves and, uh, and take very accurate references. We see later, Melissa has done a piece in which there was uh, a reference, and uh, uh, one thing that she didn't do is exactly follow that reference, which doesn't mean copy completely the reference. I'm not, I'm not uh, suggesting you that, because you have to key it and, and be, add some life into it. Uh, but there is a lot, uh, a, loss of, a lot of power. We will see later. Okay, so let's go on, because otherwise we are going Look to... Hat. Okay, one thing that I saw in uh, Melissa that sh uh, she tried to, and she actually did, um, try to be, um, uh, to touch various style, various type of character, and uh, so that's good. That's good, you try not to be, uh, I saw real with one rig, uh, and one type of uh, animation all over and over again. Um, if you can, try to, to diversify a little bit. Um, like in this case, we had a uh, more human, more intended, realistic character. Now we have uh, uh, something completely different. I don't understand uh, if the purpose of this uh, character is uh, uh, to be then an eventual character for a, a, a video game. Uh, because, for instance, when, when at the beginning is preparing, is doing 
is doing this. So I, do, I don't know if uh, th there was a purpose there. Um, I don't think it's needed. If you work for a video game and you need to do those things, you put them afterwards. Don't put them in, in your reel. Uh, try to be, um, well, the, the more um, convincing possible every single time. What I see here is, again, uh, Melissa should work more, if I can play. There is a little bit of lack of weight, uh, especially with this uh, big guy. So a, a way to make this guy uh, a little bit more appealing is to uh, have a slightly uh, sharper movement, which we don't have here when he's rising, is uh, again a little bit. So if you have a sharper movement and then you have a bigger momentum, then you can have a weight that when it goes down, bam, is, is felt much more than what it would feel here. There is weight, but it's, I, I don't think it's, it's, it's crafted in a way that uh, it gives us the real idea of this guy. I, I can imagine that it's, it's huge. So I, I would imagine a little uh, different weight on this guy, for sure. Also, um, in this animation, what we could add to make it uh, a little bit more um, appealing is some uh, follow-through movement. The, the tail, for instance, is falling very much, everything else. And uh, uh, I always, always, always suggest to have uh, uh, an object like tails or, or other, other stuff. Um, always try to start with a contrary movement. Even with, within, uh, within the, uh, the same body, uh, many times uh, to make it interesting. If I want to, if I'm three quarter and I, and I turn like this, you see, I've done it involuntarily now, but my hands didn't do from here to here. Those are my two uh, key. But when I break this down, I start to do like this. This hand is, is went in the opposite direction. Always do this. This is a, it's a little trick, but if you use it wisely, it is, it's, it's really effective because it makes the old movement much more interesting. Also because it gives you the opportunity to have something that you delayed, and, and when you are arrived into your pose, you still have something in movement. So you, you will never have the uh, uh, impression to have a robot moving like this, but it's very organic because part, different parts dif uh, move with different speed and in different moments. Offset all those things, if you can. Okay, now we have this piece. This piece is interesting because uh, I, I, I cannot know but uh, as you can see, there is a little um, the little square underneath with the 2D animation. Now, I don't know if Melissa did the 2D animation or she took a piece. Uh, I have no idea. The point is, I, I say this because the, the 2D animation is much stronger than the 3D. It's much more interesting if you see it. Uh, S never do that. Is the final result that has to be more interesting. If you uh, have done a, a very cool 2D animation as a blocking, you have to plus that if you want to show a 3D animation on top of it. Otherwise, you show me the 2D animation and I'm very happy because it's pretty good. Have a look. If I can play it. Now, what is um, lacking, especially uh, in this piece, this is another thing that is, is always good to uh, take care of when we animate. Uh, what we lack in the 3D is are the poses. The, um, the poses that we have in the 2D animation are very sleek. They have a very strong line of action and they are soft. The animation is quite soft. It's quite... Um, it's a pleasure to <coughs> sorry guys. <coughs> it's a pleasure to see. And we don't have the same sensation when we see the 3D. It's much more edgy, despite the fact that the character is quite quite uh, simple and edgy. I, I don't mean that. Still, you can pose them more dynamic, uh, more uh, flexible. <coughs> now that I say that, have a look again. 
Let's see, for instance, at, uh, I cannot scroll properly. Yeah, I cannot scroll properly. Anyway, uh, if you can see the difference between the two, uh, have a look down here. Do you see that we have a very nice line of action w with even the, the connection between the two characters, OK? You see that here we don't have it. It's, it's, it's visually, this is stronger, hence better storytelling okay, than that one. So it's much, much more clear. So when you animate, when you do your poses, you could do a very fast uh, um, pass in blocking. But then go in into that very first fast block pass and strengthen every single thing, strengthen it. This is a very strong line, which we, we lack there. It's, it's very clear. So, and overall, we can see several pieces, uh, se sorry, several uh, frames within the, the uh, animation that uh, shows that. So this is what I see mainly uh, as a difference in the two things, so, which is pretty good because it's, it's, it's something good to know. That it's, it's what we have to aim to is the, the small one. I have a question. Oh, no, I have five minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. Sorry, guys. I think I cannot comment everything. So let's, let's go in something. Here we go. This is what we were talking before. Now, I don't know at, um, if there was a mock-up uh, or partial mock-up or something, because I cannot uh, say. Now, what, what I see is that um, there is a certain acting done by Melissa, or I, it, it was her Melissa in the, the video? Who knows? Anybody knows? Okay, whatever. Uh, uh, done by you guys. <laughs> um, in which uh, there was a little bit of overacting, but... Um, there were quite strong poses, especially uh, at the end when she does this little dropping with the shoulder, which we lost completely in the 3D. So this is what you have to do when you do, many people do at the beginning especially, uh, uh, references, but then, okay, I've done the references because I've been told to do the references. Now I do my animation. Uh, no, the reference is there to study and to learn, to be believable in your animation, to, to make your animation really, really strong. Then you can add on it and make it personal, make it become an incredible piece. Uh, but still, it will give you fantastic ideas. That beautiful drop of the shoulder that we see at the end there, you don't see in the, in the final animation. Okay. That was very nice, very, very, very. You can, if, if you could have debated the fact that maybe it was very strong, whatever, you can tone it down, but still have it. So this is what you have to always to look. When you find something that is strong in your performance, you have to catch that moment and put it in your animation, enhance it, milk it, make it, make it the, the center of your animation. Your animation will become uh, more interesting and, and much more uh, beautiful and, 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 and believable to, to see. I don't think I have much more time. Uh, let me see if there's something. Okay, <clears throat> this was a, a double piece of this leopard <clears throat> uh, walking. I would have avoided to put the leopard with the man because I don't really understand what you want to, sh uh, to show. You have already pieces uh, that are quite uh, cartoony, uh, I, and now you're showing a very realistic leopard show the very realistic leopard because I know your aim. Uh, we could go into the details of this uh, walk cycle leopard, but I don't think we have the time, right? <coughs> okay. If there is any, uh, any question, any, uh, anything? So you're telling uh, 
you might also have to consider the, uh, uh, the limit, limitation of your ring. Sure. Still, uh, stretch and squash is not just stretch and squash. You can do extension and compression without having to stretch and squash. And that ring can extend and compress for sure. And when you have a pose in which you are kicking somebody like this, or you have a pose in which you're kicking somebody like this, that rig, even if it's a limited rig, you can put the pose like this, and you will have a silhouette. So this is uh, depending from you how strong your visual uh, uh, strength in, is in, in storytelling in this case. So it's always depending from you. Of course, if you have a super duper Ferrari rig instead of a 500 Fiat, then it's okay. Sorry, the analogy, I'm Italian, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yes, of course there's difference, but uh, let's not take it as an excuse. We have to push for the best, uh, and uh, even if you don't have a good rig, try to, bet, to do the, the strongest poses anyway. Yeah, Timorin, would you prefer to see a uh, walk cycle or an actual character walking in a scene on a path? Of uh, if, okay, I'm much more... Um, uh, focus in something. Uh, I, I saw b before the focus is, is, uh, was general because if you hire for uh, a, a previous or a visualization uh, company, you have to look for certain things. If you hire, a, uh, uh, like in my case, as uh, uh, animation, I don't care if you are a good lighter. <laughs> you have to be a good performer in animation for me. So, um, in, in this case, I don't care about the path, but if you tell me a teeny tiny little story with your character, you, you show me that you give me something more interesting. So instead of having a character that is rotating 360 degrees on something, you can make it also very, very, very interesting also there if you want, and you use it, and you cleverly use that. Um, like for instance, in uh, uh, Pixar they did the turnaround of the character is just, just walking. He was acting me while he was making the turn. I was super cool. Okay, so you can use that. Why not? As a device to surprise me. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, a, a walk cycle. Apart the fact that the walk cycle is the most difficult thing to do ever, so I would suggest to do something simpler, <laughs> so you you are not in in jeopardy. <laughs> but yeah, for sure, creativity. Anything else? Anybody else? Fantastic. Thank you.